The Amazon Workspace's family of products provides customers with multiple options to deploy managed virtual desktops to end users. Workspace's Pools is our non-persistent desktop option, and it requires SAML for user authentication. This video is part one of two demonstrating end-to-end -end setup of Workspace's Pools with Entra ID. In this video, we will create a Workspace's Pools setup and begin the Entra ID implementation for authentication. In a second video, we will finalize the setup. You will need an existing Entra ID setup to follow along with this video. My name is Dan Garibay, and I'm a senior worldwide specialist solution architect. I work with our end user compute portfolio of Amazon Workspaces and Amazon AppStream 2.0. Let's get started. First, we will begin by creating a Workspaces pool setup, meaning a directory and a pool. Next, we will create the SAML application in Entra ID, perform the majority of the Entra ID specific steps, and configure the SAML sign-in settings on the Workspaces pools directory. To begin, open the Workspaces console and go to the directory section in the left. I've got my Workspaces console open in the Oregon region, US West 2, for this demonstration. Then select the Create Directory button. Select the Pool category. In the User Access URL section, we'll enter a placeholder URL for the time being. It needs to begin with HTTPS colon slash slash. We'll skip the relay state parameter name. For directory information, enter a friendly name. It does need to be unique, and it does not need to be a fully qualified domain name. And in fact, I would recommend that it not be. For the networking and security section, uncheck the access to internet box this allows you to put the workspaces into private subnets where they can still have internet access through a NAT gateway or NAT instance or NAT appliance, but it does not assign them public IPv4 addresses. If that box is checked, uh, you can put them into public subnets, but I do not recommend that approach. Then select your VPC, subnets, and security group. If you see the dedicated workspace option here, you can bypass that. This is for enabling bring your own license, uh, Windows desktop workspaces pool setups, but I'm going to uncheck that and leave with the, the standard Windows server based instances for this demonstration. I'll also skip the active directory config section. This is optional and it allows you to join your workspaces pool directory to the Microsoft active directory domain, um, but this is not required. In the streaming property section, you can optionally configure clipboard permissions. The default is to allow copying and pasting in both directions, but you could set that to one direction or disable it. And then you can also control a few other things such as whether users are allowed to print and whether they have home folders. If you'd like to assign an IAM role to your workspaces, uh, to the workspaces pool instances specifically, then you can use this drop down here and select a role apply any tags you might wish to apply, and then select the Create Directory button. And then in the directories list, select your newly created directory so that we're at the details view of it, and leave this tab open. We'll come back to it in a subsequent step. The next step is to create the workspaces pool itself. In the left column, go to the pools section under the workspaces expandable section, and then select create workspace. For step one of the onboarding wizard, select, I know what workspace options I need for my use case, and then select next. 
Now select the pools option here and enter a name and description for the pool. I'll use a public workspaces bundle and I'm going to look for a server 2022 bundle and I'll use one of our power bundles. For the settings, the defaults are okay, but I'm going to raise the disconnect and idle disconnect times. Application settings persistence is an optional setting that enables some user settings in applications that are compatible to persist between sessions, giving a semi-persistent experience for those users. For more information, see our documentation and the accompanying article for this video. You can control the capacity and scaling policies here. I'm going to leave these all at the defaults. And if you'd like, you can apply tags here and select next. And then here, select the directory created in the previous section and then select create workspace pool. Now, Select the pool that was created here, select the start button, and then select the ID for the pool and leave this tab open. We'll come back to it in a subsequent step. The next step is to create the SAML integration in Entra ID. Before starting that, you will need to construct the default relay state URL. This URL has a syntax to follow. You'll want to copy the following line into a text editor, and this is available in the companion document for this video. It will look like this. So then you're going to want to take the registration code here, put that at the end, and then for the region, put the AWS region that they're in. I'm in the Oregon region, which is US West 2. That's hyphen west hyphen two. And the various syntaxes for this will be in the documentation that this video has in the description. Now that you have the relay state URL constructed, you are ready to proceed with the initial Entra ID configuration steps. In a separate tab in the Microsoft Entra ID Administration Center, in the left column under Applications, select Enterprise Applications and then select new application in the top. Select the Amazon Web Services Cloud Platform and then select the single account access button. Provide a name here and make sure this is a unique name. Um, you'll likely have more than one AWS SSO application here. And for example, each separate pool will require a separate application. Then select create. Thank you for watching part one of our video guide demonstrating end to end setup of workspaces pools with Entra ID. I hope you found this helpful. Please look forward to part two, where we will complete the setup. There are reference links in the description of the video to assist with further documentation or for any items where you need to copy and paste. And please be sure to check out our other videos for more AWS end user computing content.